system. Every device needs an operating system. Cisco devices like routers and switches, they also have an operating system. On router, we call it as iOS, Internet Operating System. This is not Apple iOS, this is Internet Operating System that runs on Cisco router. And we were looking into modes in Cisco routers. This is where we left in the previous class. Different modes we have. So as soon as you start the router, some scripts, some pages of uh, information you will see without you doing anything. And then it comes to a rest. That's the place we call it as user mode. User mode will be like this, router, the, the greater than symbol. Now this is user mode, why? Why it's called as user mode? Because when authentication is enabled, only a genuine user can see this mode. So before showing this, before coming to this mode, it will ask you the password here. Only when we put the right password, you will be able to see this mode. Yeah, so a user mode will be with a greater than symbol. Now in this user mode, we can only see some statistics of the router. We cannot see the complete configuration of that router. Few configurations, few statistics like show route, show IP route to see the routing table, show IP interface brief to see the interface status, and so on. But only few, not all show commands work here. To to see everything that is configured on the router, we need to get into next mode called privilege mode. Privilege mode or enable mode, both are same. To go to privilege mode or enable mode, we need to type the command enable. So this is user mode. And to get into the next mode called privilege mode or enable mode, we need to use the keyword enable. That will take us to enable mode, which looks like this, a hash. instead of greater than symbol. This mode will give you the privilege of seeing everything that you have configured on the router. If you have not configured anything earlier, at least you'll be able to see the skeleton of the operating system, which is not possible in the user mode. Let me show you what I'm trying to say, what I'm, what I'm saying here. So, this simulator, Mahesh, if you don't have, I'll send you this. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring one router. Just drag and drop. And then when I double click and go to command line, I can see something is booting which I explained in the previous class. And then it also asks a question, continue with configuration dialog. We always say no here. Now this question will not come every time. This question will come only if nothing is configured earlier. We have not configured anything earlier in this router. It's a fresh router. So router C, that there is nothing in it and it is, it is giving you two options. Do you want a dialog? 
way of configuring meaning it is going to ask a question first question answer this only when you answer that it is going to ask a second question and then a third question fourth question so even if you are not interested in answering them you have to answer to go to the next question which you want so we don't like this dialogue based configuration we say no so that we can straight away give the commands and configure whatever we want we can go straight to the place where we want uh, soon you will understand this better now this is what i was telling user mode now from here you can see show ip route you can see the routing table empty show ip interface brief int means what interface and brief it shows all the interface are administratively down no ip address is configured and likewise you know a lot of show commands work here even you can ping someone ping 10 0, 0, 1. actually we don't have anyone called 10 0, 0, 1. so the ping won't happen but i'm just showing you the ping is also possible from the user mode ping telnet all possible just from the user mode this mode you can do that and to go to the privilege mode or enable mode you need to type enable and you notice that you know i just type en sometime i hit enter immediately sometime i i get the entire word actually i'm getting this by pressing tab button tab it will autofill the command. Even if you say en and hit enter, it's okay. Now this is what privilege mode with the hash. Now from here I can see everything. What what do I mean by everything? There's a command called show running configuration. This configuration will show everything that is there in this router. As of now, we have not configured anything, but still you will see a skeleton of the operating system. This is what I mean, skeleton. It says the operating system currently has got this much of byte configured. And this is the version of the operating system, 2.4. And the default name given as the host name, you see this one, router, that's what here it says the default host name right now is router there's something called ceph cisco express forwarding cisco express forwarding and it says you know it is on whereas for ipv6 it is off no means off and uh, it says spanning tree mode is per VLAN spanning tree we'll talk about that later and you can see there is an interface called F0, fast Ethernet 00. Sometimes I say F00. What does it mean? It means fast Ethernet. That's the type of interface which works in 100 Mbps, 100 MB, 100 megabits. They're called as fast Ethernet. And you see there is no IP address in this interface and the interface is in a shutdown state shutdown state they are not active right now and i can see there's another interface f01 faster than 01 with no ips which is also shut down i can also see the interfaces are having auto duplex what is duplex duplex means the the direction of communication here when we say auto it may be full or it may be half duplex it depends on the two routers that are connected this router if i connect this f01 interface to another router which is also auto 
then they may have full duplex. Now what's the difference between full duplex and half duplex? Which you may know already, I'm just uh, um, reminding you. When we have two routers connecting the wire, um, now uh, this is F0 slash, uh, let's say one, this is F0 slash uh, in one or zero. Uh, it's not necessary same interface name on either side. This is different router. This may have another link here connecting to another router on F0 slash one. Yeah. Now, The duplex determines the traffic flow direction at any point, given point. So if it is full duplex, both sending and receiving of data happens at the same time, can happen at the same time, can happen simultaneously. If it is half duplex, either you can send or receive, you cannot do a both at the same time. If it is half duplex, either send or receive. Whereas full duplex is both at the same time. Sending and receiving C at the same time. And um, so when we say duplex auto, what does it mean? It is auto negotiated. If both are capable of having full duplex, if this point and this point both are capable of sending and receiving at the same time then they will have full full mode on both side if one side is not capable let's say router 2 is an old router then it is only half duplex. It can send or receive at a time, which means this will also switch to half. So we did not configure this as half. R1 has desired to be half because when it negotiated with the other guy, it found that the other guy is half duplex. When, when, when router 2 is in half duplex, router 1 cannot be full duplex. So router 1 automatically switches. That is what here auto means. We are allowing the interface to decide whether to be full or half. Even the speed. I told you speed is 100 megabits for fast Ethernet. Speed is 100 megabit, that's true. But what if the other party, what if the next router is not capable of 100 meg? What if it is only 10 meg? If the other end of the wire, which connects to the next router is only 10 meg, then this will also come down to 10 meg automatically. So that is also decided based on the negotiation. So we are allowing the interface to, to, to decide. We give the freedom of designing by its own. Instead of we putting a command and saying, I want speed 10 meg, or I want a duplex half. You do have an option to hard code it, but it is recommended to leave it auto 
That's why they have left auto by default. You did not configure, I did not configure this thing. It is there by default, I'm just showing you. There is also a virtual interface called VLAN 1. VLAN is a virtual local area network. For that VLAN, we'll talk about VLANs later. <coughs> For the VLAN 1, which is a virtual LAN identified with the number 1, there is an interface created by default. And now, IP classless is enabled by default. What is IP classless? It is something called classful and classless. If the IP address that you specify is with a default mask, then it is classful. For example, we have class A, class B. Class C. Now, any IP address whose first octet is ranging from 1 to 126 is class A. 128 to 191 is class B, and 192 to 223 is class C. For example, Ten dot one dot some number I'm writing fifty dot four. What class it is? This number you have to see. If this number is between this range, then it is class A. And for B, class B, let me write an example: one seventy two dot sixteen dot one dot one. Again, see the first number. If the first number is in between these two numbers, then it is class B. And 200.0.0.1. Now what class it is? It is in between these two, 200. So this is class C. Now for class C, This is the reservation for network, meaning this is 200.0.0 network. The network portion of the IP address is 200.0.0.1, which is default. Here in class B, the network portion is 172.16. Here, the network portion is only 10. In class A, first octet is network. Class B, first two octets are network. In class C, first three octets are to identify network. If this is maintained, if this is not changed, then it is classful. If you stick on to these rules, what rule? The first octet is only network. Then it is classful. If you say, no, 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 10.1 is network and 50.4 is host. If you will say this, then it is classless. It is classless. Classless means opposite to classful, right? Classful says, Class A networks should have only the first octet as network. The other three should be host. We'll talk about this in detail in coming classes. Now, just for, you know, trying to give you the understanding of what is classful and classless. So, um, I'm, I'm trying to answer this. 
every router by default is classless meaning they are ready to support even if it is not restricted to this boundary even if it is something like this customized one here only one octet as per the default constraint default rule class a means only the first octet is not for but if you'll say no i want first two octets as network which is breaking the rule of class full so you can call it as classless you know today in our network we all have classless we don't stick on to this boundaries provided by this class full a b and c we break it by doing subnetting. We'll learn about that later in coming class. So while doing subnetting, what really we do is we go beyond class full. We take more bits than what class full recommends. For example, 17216 means only two octet here. In class B, but I am going to say I, I want three octaves 172.16.1 as the network and dot one as a host. Now, this is what called as classless. Again, I'm telling you this is a big topic, we will be learning properly in coming class. So, we got Classless network in our today's uh, real networks. Classless. So you no need to say router, uh, I have classless. By default, it is understood, it, it is enabled. It, by default, router says, even if it is classless, I can understand you. I am ready to support you. You no need to go and enable classless services. I am ready already with this classless support because everywhere in production everywhere in the world we do subnetting meaning everywhere we have classless network so you no need to turn on this classless it is already on in old and routers we used to type this command ip classless to turn it on But nowadays, all the routers comes with classless on. Now, I'm repeating again. You see, we have not configured anything on this router. I'm just showing you the skeleton of the operating system. What does that the skeleton of the operating system means when I say? When I say skeleton of the operating system, this operating system that comes with the default features enabled in this. So operating system has got some functions to do. So these are the functions that are already enabled, pre-configured. It is configured to have classless. It is configured to support telnet. Telnet can be supported and at, at the time, someone can log in by telneting. How many logins? Zero to four, which means totally five five members can log in at the same time vty is for telnet we'll talk about that and in, in the previous class i i touched a little bit on this we'll do it again so this is what we call the skeleton of the operating system so this is available only in this mode privilege mode only in this privilege mode this command will, will work this show running configuration will not work in this user mode if you try in this mode it won't work it is possible only in the privilege mode or enable mode fine now next is from this privilege mode if you put show command and and if you want to see what all it can show put question mark after show it says it can show you configuration about authentication, authorization, and accounting. 
that is what AAA means authentication authorization and accounting it can show about the access list that you write what is access list a uh, set of permit and deny statement we'll talk about these things later arp cisco discovery protocol class maps clock you know you want to see time type clock it says according to utc <coughs> sorry sorry this is showing some manufacturing date now let us set some time you know if you want to configure time you need to go to another mode here you cannot do any configuration in this mode but I can set only this clock here. Repeating again. This mode is called as privilege mode, which gives you the privilege of seeing everything. And if you want to configure, you need to go to another mode. But there is an exception for clock. To set clock, you no need to go to configuration mode, which is like this config terminal this is what called as configuration mode to do any configuration we have to go to this mode but with one exception what is that to set clock you no need to come here so let me exit from here i'm back to the privilege mode and now i can say clock set and I can say right now here in my location, it is 6 a.m. And the date is 12th April. It's not 11th for me. It's 12th April 2023. Done. I have set the clock to the router you can check it now by typing show clock you will see according to utc this is this time and see i did not tell the time zone so it has taken it as utc time universal time clock it's wednesday that's true for me, it's Wednesday now. And April 12th, 2023. Yeah. So, to configure, we need to go to configuration mode. But to configure clock, you no need to go there. You can do it in the privilege mode itself. All other configurations, you must go to configuration mode. Say, for example, I want to change the name of this router. See, every router will come with this as a name by default. If I have 10 router, how will I name, how will I call a router? If I want to call fourth router, what, what should I call? What to, if I say, router then which router is what the question arises when i say that router come on which router so if i name it i can very clearly say you go to the router whose name is r5 something like that for example i want to name this as r1 router one so you need to go to configuration mode we, create, we, we get it into we get into configuration mode by typing config terminal config t or config terminal even if you if you if you type c o n f t that's okay it understands you know if you if you don't feel like typing the whole character you just type conf and then if you want to see the whole word then press the tab button Router will understand this configure even if you type C Y N F and hit enter. 
But if you want to see it and confirm before you hit enter, then you can press the tab button. And then I want to configure the terminal. So type T or a complete word terminal by pressing the tab button. Now I'm right now in the I am right now in the configuration mode. That is why you see config in the bracket. Now I said I want to give a name called R1. So I say host name. No space in between host and name. Do not give any space. Host name router one R1. You see the name change happened. Change the name. We have changed the name. Likewise, you can configure many things from here. But if you want to specifically configure a port, a uh, port, what is a port? You see, right now, this router don't have any other device connected here. Let's say I have a switch. See, to get switch, I need to click on the switch symbol here. And I see varieties of switches. I always use the first one. Yeah. Now, to connect the cable, you see here, like a lightning symbol, click on this, and click on this first one, and click here, and click here. It automatically connects to the port. So this port F00, right now it is in a shutdown state. I showed you. Let me show you again. When you go top, you can see F00. This is port F00. It is in a shutdown state. That's what you see here. The reason it is in shutdown state is for security. They left it down. Though the router is functioning, the port is not actively communicated. Ready to, it's not ready for communication. So we have to bring it up by typing no shutdown. For that, you need to go into this port. You need to go inside. Right now, you are not inside the port. You are inside the router, but not inside that port. So anything that is specific to the interface, you need to go inside that interface. For example, I'm going to say interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, which is this one. And I showed you it is down. To bring it up, you need to put the word no shutdown. What you saw is shutdown. Now I'm canceling it by typing no. No shutdown. When you say no shutdown, the interface will come up. You're going to see that. Look at this. Right now it is in red color. But when I hit enter, it will turn green. You want to see that? One, two, three. See, as soon as I hit enter, it says the interface change state to up means the interface is getting up from the sleep. And it is now ready to send and receive the protocols, meaning it is ready for it is ready for usage. It is ready for conversations. It is ready for traffic flow. Now, when you go back and see the picture, the topology here, you see right now it is green. Earlier it was down. And it was red, shut down. Now it is active, that's why it is green. So this is only on the routers. The interfaces are down. See on the switch, we did not configure anything. It is already green. When this comes green, this will also become green automatically. On switches also, if you go and see, similar to router, you have user mode. But the difference is, here it shows switch, there it was showing a router. And here also you can say enable, it will work the same command. Now here it is privilege mode. And you can type show run. In switches you will have many interfaces, many interfaces. But you see there is no shutdown mentioned, which means they're all up by default. You know, so this is the switch command line interface.
CLI means what? Command line interface of Cisco IOS, Internet Operating System. Anyway, I'll close the switch now. If you learn on router, it's same on switch. So we have seen now mode like, first of all, wait, I am now inside the interface. If I want to go back to the privilege mode, I need to go two step back, correct? If I want to go to privilege mode, I have to first go to config mode. That's one step back. And again, I need to go one more step back. Instead of going one by one, like exit, exit two times, you can press control Z. When you, when you press the when you press the control button and Z at the same time, it will it will bring you to the privilege mode directly. You no need to type two times exit exit. Let me repeat again. We were here inside the if mode means interface mode. From the global configuration mode. From the global configuration mode, we said I want to go inside this port, this interface. So we were inside the interface mode. To go back to the privilege mode, there are many ways. One is exit, again exit. This is one way. The next way is press control Z. Let me show you one more way and type end and hit enter that will also bring you to the privilege mode so it is this is not going to log you off you are not going to log off from the router you are coming only to the privilege mode logging off is like this again exit you know you are logged off you want to log in or again hit enter if it will ask you the username give the username password then you will see this user mode right now we have not enabled any authentication so it didn't ask me anything like username or password now we are in user mode we type enable to get into enable mode or privilege mode And then we type config T to get into the configuration mode. We can call it as global configuration mode or simply configuration mode. Both are same. The reason why we say global configuration mode because this is where we configure things that are global to the router, not local to one interface, not local to one particular port, which are global to the router itself the global configuration mode. Now to go inside a port or interface, we call this interface. To go inside an interface, we need to know the name of the interface. And when you go back and see the topology here, the name is said as F00. So you can say, interface f or fa or fast internet everything is okay you can say fa or simply f or you can say a fast internet anything is okay and say zero slash zero same like what you see here zero slash zero hit enter now you are inside a specific interface mode whatever you configure here will be applicable only on that particular port will be applied only on that particular port you may have another port connecting to another switch you see but that port is still off you see here f01 on router we are not in this port now we are in this port we are right now on f00 that interface is up already in the screen. I'm going to bring this up. For that, I have to go out from this port. Right now, I'm in the global configuration mode. This is the center mode. From where I need to switch to another interface, which is F0 slash 1 this time. Earlier, it was 0, 0. 
we were inside this. Now I'm going inside this, F01. Yeah. And now I, if I say no shutdown, you will see that will come up green. You know, so now the protocol is trying to negotiate with the router to turn green. No, sorry, the, with the switch to turn it green. Now this is also going to come green soon. Right now the protocol from there is coming and talking to this. This is already up, not in shutdown state. This is already up. You'll see this will turn green automatically. I did not do anything. See, it's green. I have not logged into the switch. It is green because the router, as soon as I say no shutdown, it started negotiating. It started sending line protocols that brought the line up. This is what line means, the link, the wire. Physically, router will look like this. Now we are talking about this is the F00 interface, this is the F01 interface. These are the two interfaces. This one is console port. We have spoken about this one earlier. Accelerary port was used once upon a time with a dialer to dial inside this router and configure. Nowadays, no one uses this accelerary port. The one with the black label. It's called export. We don't use it. That is olden days uh, way of logging into router using a dialer, like a telephone dialer. Now we configure via console port. We spoke about this in the early videos, early classes. Or you can also telnet and configure a router for which we need to enable telnet service. We'll, we'll enable Telnet and all later. Now, what I want to show here is we have various modes to configure uh, different services, different features. See, we have a lot of routing protocol. If you want to configure a routing protocol, for example, if you want to configure a protocol called BGP, you need to say router BGP and then an autonomous system number 10. Don't worry about these things. Comes in higher level later. Now, you see it says uh, I'm inside a router mode this time. This is not interface mode, this is router mode. You see we have various modes. You need not to know about everything as of now. What I want to you to know is this is user mode. To go to the privilege mode, type enable or en or enable, both are same. And then to go to the configuration mode, you type configure terminal. If you want to configure a specific interface, you go under interface F0 slash 1 or 0. So likewise, you know, you have mode. As of now, you need only this much. Now, what if I want to set a password for this router? When someone tries to log in, they should provide the proper password. Only then the router should allow him or her to enter. How do we do that? For that, we have to go to the global mode. See, this is for the entire router. It's not for a particular interface, particular port entire router so if someone wants to log into the router which means you need to be in the global configuration mode in this mode we we type line console line console right now we are what what is this this is what called as console this page where we are working you're saying line console zero 
you know this port is what the console port means it's a zeroth port there is there is the only port there's the first and last port zeroth port so i am right now inside this port now i am saying if someone is trying to log in via that port he needs to provide a password and that password is pass one two three when someone is trying to log in we have to type this log in when someone tries to log into the router via the console port the previous class if you go and see those videos i show you how a console port can be used to log in from your laptop to the router we have a blue cable a serial cable on the on the router side we connect through rj45 register jack 45 on this laptop side we use com port instead in the previous class video for you to refer now so we have logged in through the console port but i want the authentication on the port this is how you enable the authentication fine you have set the password now let's go out and check it you see if i now hit enter it's going to ask me the password it is asking now unless i give the right password i will not be seeing the user mode i will not be seeing i cannot unless i give the right password if you forget finish you cannot log into the router unless you break the password yes there is a way to break password because you are the owner of that router right because you forgot the password the router cannot kick you off the router cannot say you are not authorized hey you are the owner you have the privilege so this authentication cannot stop you using the router if you forgot the password you can go and break the password how to do that later we'll see later but now i know the password i type p a s s one two three actually i have already typed the password but for security reason it won't show any dots or a star usually in computers when we type password when you log into your laptop what it shows dots five dot means you are right you are typing five characters as a password someone can easily guess no okay he's typing five characters what may be it may be his uh, pet name his first name or second name something like that in cisco it won't give even a clue how many characters you type if someone is watching you from the back they will not have any clue okay now i have logged in to the user mode i can see the user mode now because i am i'm, I'm the genuine user i put the password correctly let's say enable and whatever i have configured you can see now show run run is the command show running configuration is going to show you all that you configured and this is going to show you from a memory called dram which is spoke earlier dynamic ram it's a memory which is a volatile one meaning as long as the power is given to this router the electric power the configuration that you you have done will reside there once the power goes off all configuration will vanish again you have to do it every time login 
to avoid that we have to save it to nvram non volatile ram how to save you will see later but now i'm going to show you from the dram what all we have when you hit enter it says so far 610 byte of configurations to the router the host name is now called as r1 the interfaces are no more shut down earlier you saw shut down keyword here we cancel by typing no shutdown and then earlier we were not having this bgp and then earlier you were not having this thing we have we have added this we have included this for cons you see now if i if i shut down the router all these configurations will go away and i i need to do it again to avoid that repetition of repeating the configuration i can say copy all the running configurations means you no know, copy all that you have in the dram to startup configuration meaning to nvram nvram is what called as startup configuration what is nv non volatile non volatile ram so we are copying all the running configuration to startup configuration so that all that i have configured will be written into the memory which is not going to get erased see now i go to, i off the router see the router is off right now if you go it won't allow you it says device must be power out okay the device is off let me on it i on it and now when i go back it is saying booting it is saying it is decompressing the image from the flash memory okay it has booted it has booted completely this is what i was talking about the nvram we have we have put some data inside this now because there is some data here it don't ask you the configuration uh, dialog yes or no it don't ask see didn't ask me it straight away asks me the password hey if you are a genuine user give the password so that i'll allow you to see the user mode so it clearly says that you will not be able to see user mode unless you put the password whatever we do you will not be inside there is only two ways to go inside one is put the right password otherwise break the password not everyone knows how to break it so they need an expert to break it we learn it how to break it later maybe in the next class now i am going to give the password p a s s 1 2 3 boom i am inside no one has got a clue how many characters i typed because there is no dot or asterisk nothing and if you want to know what all commands are possible in this place put question mark these are the commands that are available in this user mode and now to get into the next mode called uh, enable mode or privilege mode you type enable see there is only one command starting with en that is why even if you type en and uh, hit enter it is okay it understands that i need to turn on the privilege mode meaning it will take you to the next mode called privilege mode or if you say tab button it auto fills because there is no other command starting with enable en so it understands that you are trying to type enable it auto fills auto filling is possible 
Now, if you want to see what all possible commands that are in this mode, put question mark, you see more commands in the privilege mode. Because it's a privilege mode. And config T, put question mark. All these commands are available in config T. Under the interface, you will have different set of commands. So every mode has got different set of commands, but there are a few commands which are common. You see, ARP, CDP. This is here as well as uh, uh, not here, but it will be one step back. Again, here also you will see. ARP. Mm, sorry, here in the, the first page. Uh, pass one, two, three. If you see here, you will definitely see ARP. Where is ARP? Okay, it should be after show. Yeah. ARP, CDP. So some commands are repeated in uh, all modes, some commands are particular to one mode. For example, if you go to the interface, interface F00, um, F. You will be able to type this command IP address. You will not have this command anywhere else. To type an IP address for an interface, you need to be on that particular mode called interface mode, right? So a lot more is coming. We'll go step by step. So far we have learned about the modes in today's class. Um, try to do something like what I have done in this class today. Try to repeat the same thing, at least, you know, repeat the same thing. I would like to show you one more thing which I have also shared in the previous class. I'm setting banners. Banner, no simple banner. See in which mode I'm doing that? In the, in the global mode. Banner, and inside the quotation, whatever you type. Okay, banner during the login time. During the login time, I wanted to show the banner support inside the quote. Welcome to to the CCNA class. Now, again, let us save this. How do you save? Copy, running configuration to startup configuration. Hit enter. Now, I exit. Now, when I hit enter, look at this. It says, hey, welcome to CCNA class. User access verification. So you need to put the Pass P A S S one two three, and you are in. So we learned a few things today, like mode, setting banner, changing the name of the router, and bringing the interface up, and so on. You know, setting password for the console mode, and so on. In our next class. We are going to learn how to give an IP address, how to enable a service called Telnet, and then how to crack a password if you've forgotten. Right? So, do you have any question on today's class? No, no, no sir. All right, then. Very happy to see you again after a long time, Maria. Uh, we had a long break. Um...